Okay. Chris is getting home right now. And mics are <laughs> live, and I think here we go. Hey, folks, and welcome to Maddie's to be determined name talk show, <laughs> pilot so number <Maddie> two. Talks. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, hey, uh, <laughs> how are you guys doing? Uh, tonight, we would normally be playing Threads of Fate, but we're not. So, why not uh, get together with some friends and chat? Because chatting is fun. It is. And, yes, the music is gone. Uh, sorry. Ben. Sorry. Um, if you... What, where, where did I get that? I, I just signed up. I just did a trial service for a song service that lets you steer, play their music on YouTube or something like that. So uh, yeah. Cool. And it's, it's fun. Yeah. I, I like it. It's called happy electronic pop three indie Ooh. pop version. Yeah. Nice. I like the, the second one more than the third one. Uh, I have the second one. It's very good too. Uh, I was leaving that for the, uh, the the goodbye screen ah. so uh just keep your ears out for that one <laughs> <laughs> hey everyone uh i am maddie aka so many games uh this is my twitch channel obviously and we are here with a couple of my uh, compatriots from threads of fate and one of my brand new best buddies uh the nerd from nowhere Devin, how you doing buddy good how are you <laughs> awesome and of course you guys i'm sure know adam and joy joy adam uh, how you guys doing i'm very tired i'm, I'm good uh, today but not too bad it is my friday thank god Ooh. um i have tomorrow off i'm gonna sleep in until seven which i almost did today which i is feel bad. like i'm gonna I worked until I work at start work at six, so that was fun. But you know, sometimes that happens. I mean, my entire time with that, with this job, I have been late twice, including today. So I don't feel bad. All right. Well, you know what? Awesome. <laughs> so one of the things that definitely brings us all together is the D and D RPG Twitter community. Uh, this is definitely where we all kind of found each other in different ways, and all of us are tied together because of Thread Raiders. So with that in mind, I would like to uh, pose some questions. Uh, let's go ahead and start with Joy. Joy, so you have, you've told us many times uh that you live in what's called nerd palace nerd palace 2.0 2.0 yes and <laughs> i i absolutely love this will you uh tell the folks at home uh what is nerd palace and where did that all derive from okay uh nerd palace is uh sort of it was the sort of idea that we had uh me and some of my internet friends that someday we're going to all buy a house together and we're going to be housemates. And we lived on opposite sides of the country. We had a three hour time zone difference. We played uh, Final Fantasy 11 together. And uh, we flew out to visit each other a couple times. And one of the times we were like, let's look at houses. <laughs> We weren't we weren't in a place that either of us lived at, but both of us like both of the the major houses of Nerd Palace yeah. had been uh, under some under some need for change. Wow. So so as kind of a lark, we looked at houses in the area that one of our uh, one of our former Nerd Palace members was living at because we were going to an anime convention uh, by. <laughs> By happenstance, this happened to be Nerd Palace 1.0. Uh, we uh, we looked at it. We liked the neighborhood. It was enormous. It was dirt cheap. We found out there was a reason for that. Uh, uh, oh no! There, 
there were seven of us in the first edition of Nerd Palace, and now we're we're down to four for various uh, housemate shuffle reasons. But yeah. uh, we we got a good group. I'm sure that's got to be a lot more manageable with four. Yeah, you know, it's yeah, it, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, seven is fine when you're in your twenties. I'm sure you know, like or right, you, or at uh-huh. least or at least young at heart. Um, I have never been young at heart, so I don't understand that term. Uh, I mean, I was like 12 years old, and I felt like I was 37. So, um, but I'm uh, still like 12. Yeah, I, <laughs> and I and I love that about my friends. How so many of them are like, you know, still kids on the inside. I was never a kid. I was never a kid on the inside. Um, but uh, I I couldn't even imagine. Yeah that so that that's amazing um and a lot of you a lot of your uh friends and you do uh you do larping correct yeah yeah it's the off season right now we're all old and we don't want to play in the heat of summer in georgia (laughs) i hear that (laughs) um when did that start um my first LARP, my first, my first Boffer LARP was that same trip that we found the house. Um, previously, we had done parlor LARPs, and uh, we, we did those at uh, Acon convention in Dallas. Um, okay. We would all drive out or fly out to Dallas and do a, an anime-themed parlor LARP, and we called it affectionately Crossover Fanfic the LARP. <laughs> And that ran for years and years and years. Oh my uh, gosh, that's awesome. What's a parlor LARP? Is that just like is, indoors? That was going to be my next question. <laughs> yeah, it is It is an indoor LARP where there is oh. no combat. Any uh, challenges ah. are, are determined by uh, some sort of like rock, paper, scissors, stat. Yeah, I'm talking about your game. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Christy's home. She, her desk is right behind me. Uh, um, Christy, you, uh... Uh, you'll get sometimes. Uh, you'll draw a card. You'll you'll just add your stat plus whatever you're trying to do, and that's how you determine uh, who who takes the upper hand in a challenge. Huh. That's that's really cool. I like that. Yeah. Um, uh, that's versus a, a boffer LARP, which is generally outdoors, uh, and you hit each other with sticks. <laughs> right. Yes. Uh, I can see where the names kind of make sense and, uh, <laughs> how you would not, uh, not confuse the two. <laughs> um, Devin, so you affectionately call your self and your podcast uh you're the nerd from nowhere and the nerds from nowhere uh or you're the nowhere nerd um right and so you literally live in the middle of nowhere that's correct yeah uh, that's what i would call it that's what i do call it i i happen to look up the uh town of uh, Gunnison, Utah, folks. Uh, Gunnison, Utah. It has a population of roughly 3,300 people. You know. Oh, that's that's more than I thought. And it is literally in the center of Utah. It really is. It's, it, it's, it's like smack dab in the middle. I think you have my hometown beat by like half. My original. But I mean, <laughs> there are a lot of people in Minnesota, you know, they're there, very concentrated. There aren't a lot of people in Utah. There just aren't, you know, it's, there's a lot of well, desert. There's a lot of mountains and stuff. I mean, there, there's a few like up in like the Salt Lake area, but you yeah. get into oh, central yeah. Utah and it's just nothing. Like there's all these little towns and they're all 10 miles away and they're all approximately the size of my town yeah like so. five square miles maybe at most you know <laughs> yeah no i do that are like three houses but yeah. somehow they constitute a town yeah i i do 
I mean, I get that because I do live in Idaho, and right. Idaho actually has less people than Utah. And <laughs> uh, but we have that same, the same situation where it's like you have the one big city or the one big metro area, mm-hmm. and then everything else is just tiny little whatevers. And you, I mean, you have a couple. You know, you have a couple cities around the state that have a, a chunk of people, but yeah, I mean, it's... you have a lot of tiny little cities everywhere. The, we've we've got three areas in Minnesota. We have the Twin Cities, which is <laughs> Minneapolis, St. Paul, which are not the same city for people who are not from Minnesota, but sometimes think because they're always put together. Right. Um, That's why they're called the Twin Duluth. Cities. There's Duluth, which is horrible and awful and beautiful <laughs> as long as you're not living there. Um, <laughs> No, like it's it's like everybody. If you're if you live north of Duluth, Duluth is where you go on vacation. If you live south of Duluth, the cities is where you go for your vacation. Okay. Uh, because the Duluth is the biggest like town. Uh, like, it's where everything is. It's a port city. Like it's on the Great Lakes. Uh, and then there's I guess kind of like maybe the Iron Range, um, which is where I'm from. Uh, which is like four, five, six cities stuffed really closely together around the mining pits and stuff like that. Okay. Um, where, fun fact, the tallest suspension bridge in the continental U.S. is. Ooh. Um, they had to make it the tallest or else it wouldn't reach the bottom of the mine pits. <laughs> the only reason it's the biggest or the oh, tallest. Okay. Um, it, <laughs> I don't know any of these those other places. Um <laughs> I didn't know Fort Worth and Dallas were like that close. They're really people. nearby. Like, um, so Minneapolis, St. Paul, um, if you are anywhere except for like maybe within like 10 minutes drive, um, all of the road signs will just say Minneapolis, St. Paul. Um, they are literally, you literally take a step and you are in Minneapolis from St. Paul. Like it, they are connected. Right. Um, to the point where we don't say Minneapolis and St. Paul for the most part, we say the cities. Like they're the cities. We're going to the cities. Yeah. You yeah. In that... New York, the city is New York. Yeah. Like, and we've like, that is if nobody says, Oh, which cities are you going to? It's like, it's <laughs> Minneapolis, St. Paul, even no matter where you are in Minnesota, if you say the cities, that's what you mean. Yeah. Um, but like, that's everybody lives there. Everyone. Um, or you live within driving distance of it. Or you live in Duluth. Yeah, that's uh, but like yeah, that's very common. Yeah. Um, but like I grew up in a town that's like I think third, I think it's fifteen or sixteen hundred people. Um, I didn't actually grow up in there. I grew up uh, fifteen miles away from that mm-hmm. in a disincorporated township, right. uh, which doesn't have a welcome to sign. Um, it has two bars, two churches, uh, and that's it because that's all you need in, to be a town in Minnesota. Um, <laughs> But like it's this huge gap of land because it's technically a township, um, and there's like splotches of different cities in it because Minnesota is a mess. But like so, yeah, like I drove 15 minutes to school every day yep. to the next town over, um, and like even if you like depending on where you, which part of the break and where in a town you were, you drove to the next town over. Oh yeah, that's yeah, how you do like, it, and. Like I now live in a town that is within another town. My hamlet was part of another town. Like because we didn't have any government in the hamlet. It was all like it would be like Hamlet of Glenfield, town of Martinsburg. So all of our all of our government stuff was handled up the hill in Martinsburg. We had nothing to do with it. (laughs) We we are within uh, Minatrista. Um, so we are uh, watched over by the city of Minatrista police. There is no uh, St. Bonifacius Police Department. We have a town hall. Uh, we have a bike shop. Nice. We have like four garages to take your car to. And we have like the most hipster fucking store in the world. <laughs> that is just like this. It's like the most like self-important hipster name that you can think of. That's about what it's named. I forgot it. <laughs> but like it's just like um like and they sell just everything that is if if you think of something stereotypical that hipsters would buy they sell it 
and it's just like right in the middle of this bumfuck nowhere town where our library is literally a room and it is only open on Tuesdays and Thursdays for two hours. But you have a library. We do. Yeah. It was, just has magazines. That's, that's it nice. It has no books. It has no books. It has magazines. <laughs> I, I think we have like a shop that sells batteries, but I'm not sure because I don't think it's ever actually open unless you call it. <laughs> You have to call him. and be like, hey, Bob, open up the store. Bob, yeah. Bob I want to buy batteries, Bob. I yeah, see. I can't quite figure it out. I, I've i never gone in there, and I have no desire to. But <laughs> well, I found and, out that the reason our town exists is because there's a missile depot. <laughs> and so it was like yeah. they built the town around the missile depot because the people needed somewhere to live, despite the fact that it was in another town already. And so, like, it's within the, like, city zone of Minatrista, but they're like, fuck it, we're building another town. <laughs> and so we've got this park that is like uh, like, like two blocks behind my apartment that is like the Miso Silo Park. And it's just this like little kids park across from the um, like Catholic elementary school, uh, which is like the most Minnesotan thing in the world, I feel, is just like the Catholic the Catholic elementary school, the graveyard, and the uh, missile silo park are all like across the street from each other. Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's brilliant. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> uh, so, my question, Devin, uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> is this where you're from originally? Like, uh, not not Gunnison. No, I I grew up near <laughs> here. Okay. So I, I grew up in central Utah, but not this particular town. Okay, so this is definitely like... So this is by choice. This is home, you know? This is like what you've always Kinda. known, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I grew up in small towns, and I, I grew up in central Utah, in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, That's but that's awesome. Not this specific one. I, I got a job here, so I moved here. Well, yeah, and that's that's kind of... Uh, at least one of the things I've noticed, especially, you know, with with it up here, uh, when when my husband's brother moved up here, gosh, he couldn't find a safety job in Boise to save his life. He ended up having to go out to Jerome and there's Jerome, you know, like, <laughs> but I mean, it's that just, is a great name for a town. I mean, like, I mean, it's adorable. And when they moved there, they just opened their first Taco Bell. It was really nice. exciting for the town. Um, <laughs> That's and, what it's like where I'm from, too. But, <laughs> yeah. You know, it's it's. But the funny thing is, I mean, Jerome is like just outside of Twin Falls. Twin Falls is 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 a city. It's not big, you know, but it's a city, you know, People live in it. It's big for idaho you know it's uh, big compared to where i am yeah you know <laughs> so but but of course i live smack dab like right next to boise so i'm basically in the hub of everything um so i have no complaints and uh except well it's like one of the f meridians one of the fastest growing cities in america and people keep moving here from california and traffic sucks and uh, <laughs> so they not keep, so different from california you know they keep building <laughs> all these homes and oh they, there's this there's this intersection okay so all the roads in our neighborhood had literally all the all the intersections were stop signs when we moved here nice and they're all like now they're all mega intersections um, for future road widenings that will happen eventually. And well, <laughs> of course there's still one of the old, old, like it was one of the first, first, uh, intersections with lights. And so it's only got like, you know, just like the two lanes, there's no turn lanes or anything like that. And that's the intersection that the city approved, basically hundreds of apartment buildings nice. going up on the corner, <laughs> like giant apartment complexes. And I'm like, I remember driving by there the other day, just looking at it going, 
some city council members need to be fired. Like that's that's insane. <laughs> the you know? town that my brother lives in, they are. It's like it's one of the bigger, quick, like faster growing cities, uh, like in this, like to the west of the cities. Uh, and every time that I like, so I used to work at the Renaissance Festival, mm. uh, and I usually will go stop at their house uh, and ride along with uh, his wife and their child because then I don't have to drive. And driving to the Renaissance Festival <laughs> is horrible because it's in a fucking mine pit. Um, actually, it's in a rock quarry, but they're the same thing. Yeah, yeah. rock pit, uh, mine quarry. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, but so, um, and every year uh, we take we drive through, and there is like a new extension of townhomes uh, because that's the thing here it's not apartments it's townhouses and so like it just keeps stretching along and growing and growing and growing as a i it's great but um there's a joke in minnesota that there are three uh three seasons summer winter and road construction yeah yeah well, um the joke here was it was basically winter or road construction those were the mm -hmm. two seasons and now no they build during the winter now ours so don't it's, it's impossible constant. so ugh. yeah i i like no one would make them do that here yeah. um but like they've it's just it's ridiculous because they're the road i take to work is now under construction mm -hmm. which adds like 10 minutes to my drive home not my drive to work because it's 5 30 in the morning and no one in their right mind is working at that point besides me with, only with the crazy the right people. mind um but like on the way home i just like sit there and the where they had where they're working on it they basically hold up traffic and let uh one of the sides go through until the other side reaches the intersection behind it yeah. which is like half a mile of cars and then they let that go through and then by that time the other side has hit its roundabout roundabouts are big in minnesota roundabouts are why. horrifying <laughs> I, I don't mind them, but like you need to be able to see the other roads, which mm -hmm. isn't always a thing here. It's kind of horrible. Hmm. I, <clears throat> I'm not jealous of that. I, I walk to work. I literally live across the street from where I work. So Whoa, I, I that's incredible. I that, that, that is like the dream. But like if there's weather, you still got to go because you can walk. Yeah. Yeah. See, like in my case they're like don't come to work there's a blizzard it's april yeah but even if i didn't live across the street they'd still tell me to come to work because i work at a hospital you work at a hospital oh, and yeah. so like, that's I mean, like, yeah they would they wouldn't be like weather sucks you can stay yeah. home. <laughs> nobody's gonna be hurting in this weather yeah so. we we can still log in remotely we can't make anything but we can make graphics i can't do my job remotely i mean I you're terrifying. still like you're still a mile like you're a mile high aren't you there devin um probably close to it yeah i think it was a little, I, I'm not a little sure over a little over five thousand feet so i'm sure the winners are pretty um yeah it's really weird because so I don't know how to describe it, but like all the area around Gunnison, it snows pretty well. Gunnison is completely dry. Like uh, okay. it'll be raining all around it. And it is just nothing in this wow. town. Okay. I, I don't get it. So it it usually doesn't rain or snow. And then when it, it does needs to hydrate. Yeah. And every now and then it'll rain and everybody's basement floods because yeah it's just it not used not to it prepared. not used to it yeah yeah the worst inch of snow in the world yeah <laughs> so but uh yeah i do i do like my my commute to work every day like i'll just walk over to work so. um <clears throat> so adam mm. you my friend are mm. you're you've done threads of fate we've we've done threads of fate for six some months 30 episodes we just marked mm -hmm. uh you started your own campaign on uh wednesdays uh you're now in a curse of strahd campaign on thursdays and you're I've joining a fourth on game sundays. on sundays uh, <laughs> and i'm currently uh, in the works of putting together um something really fun 
um, which probably will be uh, taking up like my off Tuesdays for from Shadowrun. Uh, That's right. You're also <laughs> in a in a. Oh right, in Shadowrun. In Shadowrun, and... that's every I... two weeks. I have two days off that I, I have two days right now that I'm not playing a uh, role playing game. We call the... that when you get to role play yourself. Uh, uh, it really is. It uh... really is. Uh, <laughs> but like the like, it that's why I try to work at least a little bit of me into all my characters. Okay. Um yeah, I, I somebody said okay, so <laughs> a few weeks ago. Um, I put out every once in a while, I put out a little list of like the games that I would like to be a part of. Yeah. Um, like the games that I, that are like my list of games that I would fucking love to be in. Um, and last time I put it out, I put out um, basically like a supernatural campaign. Um, one that would be like, you'd, you'd play as a group of friends who like are like on their way home from a college party uh, and they get like basically forced to kill this monster. Uh, and it basically drags them into being monster hunters. Uh, one of them was a Star Wars campaign where you play a bunch of uh, smugglers, um, and you just like have to weigh like playing the Empire against the the rebellion. Okay. Because uh, I think that would be really cool. Um, one was a Mass Effect campaign because Mass Effect is great. And Mage, come on! Um, <laughs> I've still got two days off, uh, but. Um, where like I would totally be playing a like totally just like a normal old human in that because that's what Mass Effect is to me. Um and I had one of my friends who was like, "Yo. So supernatural campaign, huh? I could maybe make that work." Wow. And so I was like, "Okay." Uh, da, da, da. Um, and so like we were talking about uh how to make it work because uh, supernatural has a uh, tabletop RPG out there. I don't like it. Uh, oh, okay. It's it's a lot of... <laughs> I learned on 3.5 and Pathfinder uh, and like I like rolling d20s <laughs> for like everything. Okay. Uh, like to check if something works, I like rolling a d20. Um, the path, the uh, supernatural one uh, has like you roll a d6 if you're at this level. Then you roll a d8 if you're this like if you're this seven world does that too. And if you're at this proficiency, you get to do this. And I'm just like, I don't want my brain to do have to figure that out when I'm yeah. in four other games. Savage so, worlds, you when you level up, you buy a different die in the skill. Uh, you can still fail your ass off. Yeah, like it's just like I was looking yeah. at it, and I'm like, uh, my brain, my brain was doing the same thing when Virus invited me to play that mech game with him. Yeah, uh, he was doing Ooh. one shot. I like looked at it, and my brain just went like, Ooh. "Yeah," like yeah. it was part of the fact that like I was like worn out as hell during that time, uh, <laughs> but um, like it was. But so like we were, ta I was talking about like my ideas for like what system we were going to be using, uh, and we settled on uh, a modified version of D twenty Modern, uh, because if you've played if you played uh, three point five, it's essentially three point five. Uh, so it's like pretty easy for anybody who has played D and D to like smooth into, even if you've just played uh, Fifth Ed. Um, but I've been spending like the last week and a half reskinning all of the races um, <laughs> because I was like, I I want there to be options for the races, but I want people to be I want I want all the people to be human. Like, so we're going to be playing as like a group of humans. So I essentially changed all of the races into bloodlines. Oh, okay. um, so like you still get all the bonuses, stat bonuses and everything. It's just you're human. Right. Um, and like elves are essentially descended from elves. Uh, half elves are descended from a branch of the elven li lineage. Like I. Um... Boop. Uh, like uh, Asmar are still uh, angel, like half angels, essentially. Uh, tieflings are from the line of Cain. Um, like I just I've I've I finished it today um but like yeah it's fun it this is kind of what i love doing when it comes to like i can't help this i like looking at all the work you've done on it when you like, showed me the other day it's so interesting it's it's like i have this issue and i've talked about this before where i hate playing vanilla things i hate being involved with vanilla things and if i have any influence at all i kind of throw things away and redo things um like for uh Hyardal, i 
reskinned all the races. I cut out races. Um, so like it's a more limited um, like pool that you can draw from because I was like, these are the races that would fit in this world. Yeah, yeah um, I get that. My The first ever time I DM'd, I created the system Slapdash. Uh, like not name Slapdash, but like Slapdash as in like I threw a bunch of things together. Okay. Um, and it's uh, what will eventually when I um, finish it is the uh, system I'm working on right now, 2212. 2212 um, right. And it's like I have this issue with just taking things and running them as they are meant to be. Uh, and I think that's not really an issue because that's like what D&D is. Like that's what homebrew rules are uh, in the rules for D&D, it specifically says like you don't need to follow these rules you can do what you want to and like D&D gives you that freedom to do stuff oh yeah right like it's but so yeah i <laughs> i'm in way too many things i have i have accepted this and this is my lot in life so joy you've you've mentioned uh that because you do play a lot of different games normally uh yeah so you have some that are on hiatus um, what, like, what are the different types of games that you are involved with? This is, I, I think would be, is, is fascinating. Yeah. Um, my Monday game is a split campaign. We do an arc of 3.5 and we do an arc of 5e. Uh, they're both set in Eberron. Okay. Um, the 3.5 arc is set in a, like a, a pocket dimension. Oh. And we're uh, the the 5e arc is set on uh, Corvair, the main continent. Uh, then we have a big eyes small mouth game that is every other Tuesday usually. Uh, that one is set in One Piece. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it's crazy. Uh, the system is very flexible. It's normally meant to be run with D6 but uh, it's been modified to run with tarot. It's the same system that my uh, monthly uh, Fate Stay Night game is, oh, okay. uh, where they've, they've redesigned the D6 system to work with a tarot deck. Nice. Oh, so, I love tarot uh, cards. They're so pretty. Yeah, yeah and the, uh, the, the GM for the Fate game is like super, super creative with it. Nice. Uh, so he's the whole the whole campaign is themed on the tarot card we have instead of uh, natural 20 you can draw your card that's a card that fits your character's personality and goals he assigned Whoa. his you get the like fool? literally uh we we don't have the major arcana for everybody Aww. but i think mine is wheel of fortune but we haven't found it out in canon nice. yet so <laughs> <laughs> we, we uh, have I was in a campaign that was very like we had this thing where every time you did something really cool, you got a tarot card, uh, and if you kept it until the end of the night, you could get extra XP. If it met, and you got extra extra XP if you could convince the DM that its meaning fit along with what happened that night. Uh, and then <laughs> at the end of the campaign, he ascribed one of the he ascribed like the major arcana to different characters. Uh, my character got the fool. Um, I started off the campaign by drinking an unholy god's blood because I thought it was cool and would give me superpowers. It did not. It cursed me fatally. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, one of my other campaigns that's on hiatus is uh, Savage Worlds, and it is also Eberron. Um, oh, okay. It is set in Carlactin, which is also on the main continent, and it's a place where necromancy is cool and legal. <laughs> <laughs> So we have a lot of fun and misadventures. Our party leader is a uh, necromancer cleric nice. of Blood of Vol. Wow. She's she's very nice. Her character concept was nice evil. <laughs> nice evil. Okay. Okay. I get yeah. it. I get yeah. that. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's Chrissy's a lot of people character. Like she just says, you don't have to be a dick to be a bad guy. <laughs> That's right. That's true. That is very true. Um, and that's it. Um, I have in the past done a lot of other stuff. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. we've, we've played, uh, there was a final fantasy D 20. We played a little of that. We've played, uh, the Dresden files, which is a, f a fate game. Oh, yeah. So, it's so cool. that, that was ridiculously fun. And we're all kind of bummed that the campaign isn't running anymore. Yeah. Um, 
what else? There was someone made like an Avatar The Last Airbender D20 system. Oh. We played a couple of games of that. Uh, I've played um, Scissor Step on Twitter. Uh, she made a Steven Universe game. Oh, that, okay. That nice. She like basically made the whole system herself, and we played we played a campaign of that. Wow. Cool. It was really really fun, really creative. Um, I don't know if she's doing anything with it right now. We had to stop the game because her art started taking off. So okay, she, yeah. she didn't have well, enough time to dedicate to it. That's that's a very good reason. Yeah. You know? Um, I mean. It's it's still adulting, you know. So that's that's yeah. always a bummer, but it's that's good adulting though, right? Yeah. <laughs> um gosh, I wish I had your life. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh you it, it it feels like you have uh the most fun group of people that surround you. <laughs> I try to keep the people I surround myself with enjoyable to interact with. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Is it is key. Um, uh, Devin, so let's let's talk about the the podcast now. Uh, you have you and your friend Joe uh, do the Nerds from Nowhere podcast, right? And uh, where did the concept come from, and and how did you guys get started on that? Oh, that's a really interesting story. We decided to do a podcast. <laughs> I mean, it's a good reason. <laughs> that was um no, we um so yeah, my my friend Joe, we we've, we've just always wanted to do something creative and fun together and mm -hmm. We never ever did it because we didn't know what to do. So one day we just decided to try it. Um, so that I mean, there really wasn't a reason, right? So much as just an excuse to hang out with my friend, <laughs> right? I mean, there are. That's what our Monday game was. It was an excuse to hang out. <laughs> yeah. So. I mean, basically, right now is an excuse. Uh, like our excuse to hang out because you know like our game got canceled but we still are going to hang out and talk so yeah and, see you know this is uh i mean and fun things fun things can always come out of that that's awesome yeah that's the internet right excuse to hang out the internet is insane or, like actually i guess the internet's an excuse to look at porn right it really is but uh, well it's it's an excuse for everything you know hey, where right. It's an excuse it, to shop on the toilet or, yeah. you know, like <laughs> it's just 60% like an excuse to look at porn, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> whatever. I, 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 <laughs> I will say though, I believe that at least even like besides all of the porn, um, the internet is just like, it's, I'm glad that I was born when I was like, I was, I'm, I was born in 1990, um, which means that like, I get like, so, uh, like a good amount of nostalgia for like all the things that like people who were born like 20 years up to 20 years like before me because like those things were still around like everything right. like and then you hit like the 90s and suddenly it was like everything starts progressing stupidly fast like right. it's just like oh you your parents had like car phones if they were super rich well in like five years everyone in your you know elementary school class will be using cell phones yeah like <laughs> you go from i got to experience the coolness of my father having a work cell phone in his car a bag phone and it was the coolest thing and then i also got to enjoy the joys of you know the um track mobile or track phone uh pay by card that was um, my first phone yeah yep <laughs> the brick it was great yeah and then That's like you know, cell ph and then like cell phones weren't just for like emergencies; they were for fun. And then people were on their phones on the internet. Like all of that's like I got to enjoy the rise, the fall, and the other uh, like obsolescence of VHS. Like <laughs> it's well, you know, Blu-ray and DVD are a thing. Wait, wait. Like, 
You guys well, don't have a collection of VHSs? I do. It's no. under. I do, and I have no <laughs> way to play them. Um, my VHS player recently broke. I was sad. <laughs> I can't watch uh, the old Zorro movies anymore or yeah. TV show anymore. Like it, and now like from like having like no way to like really like communicate with people like across or like meet people who are like living in other countries and stuff. Now I can literally just jump online, throw out it throw out a tweet saying like i'm looking to start a group and have my inbox bombarded by people who are like oh you want to be a, you want to play D D? let's play D D." like it's ridiculous it's, it's awesome. fantastic it's utterly fantastic but it's just like it's when i started crazy. my wednesday night game um like i <laughs> i knew within like two hours three hours who i wanted to be in my group but like i was like i'll wait until every all and like for the next like three days, even after I had put out a tweet saying like, I got my people. It was just like constantly like phone going off being like, you got a new direct message. I'm like, great. <laughs> Open it up. <laughs> Sorry. It's already closed. Bye. Yeah. But like, it's ridiculous how like you can just we're, start a game. Yeah. We're all accessible and like, you know, we were literally just in a, you know, in the Thread Raiders Discord, you know, back in December, January, just talking. We we're just talking. Yeah. And, and it was literally like, it was, uh, there were the few of you that had never played 5e. Mm -hmm. and, I had never played 5e. Yeah. And you, you know, so we were all talking about how, like, we want to get it something. Cool? It's, it's if, actually if, Mage's fault. If you guys could play Five E, and then boom, Quinn just like pops in and goes, "I could run I like, Curse of Strahd like, for you." I like running Curse of Strahd. It's like awesome because Mage was doing that uh, interview um, with like some I don't even remember who it was, but like he was running this interview, and me and uh, Carrie were in the chat, uh, and like somewhere through it, we mentioned that we had never played Five E. Right. And then it moved into the uh, Thread Raiders Discord, and we were talking about, like, oh, man, this would be great. And I think that's when Maddie and Joy got brought into it. Uh, and then um, we were like, we just need to find a dungeon map. And Quentin's like, I, Quinn like... suddenly, like, oh, no, just like he, I mean, nowhere. we didn't even no say we needed a dungeon master. We were just talking, like, ooh, it would be cool if we could get a, a yeah. 5e game together. And Quinn just popped in and was like... I I'll, like running Curse I'll, of Strahd. I'll run the game for you. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, okay. We'll stream it. It'll be awesome. And yeah. then like, boom, there it was. It happened so fast. There was, was Mike was and it just like, it, it just happened. It, it was glorious. Yeah. Like, it was, yeah. Uh, you know, and it's just crazy how that's, that stuff happens. Mm -hmm. It's just like, bam, there's a game. Ah. So thank you, Mage. Thank you for doing that interview. Thank you, know. you everybody. Like... I, I know. Seriously. Everybody was, that took part in the in the creation. We, Mate, I'll gladly take the blame and, for it. And I was, you know, <laughs> like I was going through the old the old Discord chat that we had and stuff the other day, and just like I went all the way back to the beginning, just like oh wow, reading through and just going, oh my god, we were so. We were so like geeking hard and like like great. little kids like uh -huh. like we just like got let into a candy store and we're like ah <laughs> you know like oh my god we get to play D and D you know and yeah. I've never played a druid let's do this <laughs> and and yeah. then it was like but then like you throw on top of that like we were streaming a game for the first time mm -hmm. we were like recording it to potentially have a podcast we were all these things happening and it was just like it was so D&D oh, &D Beyond was just coming out yeah. and yeah. and we were like we we're like oh what's this crazy thing like I don't know if I want to use this and and, I love it. and it's, now it's, we're like we can't live without it and it's just uh, like, yeah it's, it's so crazy I, I, I now own all of the uh, character creation things for D&D &D Beyond like I, I, uh -huh. yeah. Goals. Like, I, I, I did find out that it was cheaper to just buy the Eberron one than to just buy the individual, like, class things. I want Warforged. There, yeah. I'm done. Like, You're not done. <laughs> it's like, here's the thing. I'm done. <laughs> I, I wanted, I want all the options. 
Um, so I was like, I went through and I'm like, I just want all the character based stuff. Um, and so like I have them all. And for some of them, it was like, I wanted to have some of the Eberron stuff, not only for me, but for um, in my Wednesday night game, one of the guys is playing a thief uh, changeling. So I was like, mm -hmm. I want to have changeling information. Um, so, you know, like, I mean, I'm as well just, since I'm going to buy it, I should buy the other ones. Like, it was, yeah, I'm, I constantly have a full roster because, like, I think um, three out of the four characters are characters I play, uh, three out of the six are characters I play in campaigns. Um, then uh, one of them is, or two of them are backup characters. And then one of them is a character I need to have on hand because he's an NPC in one of the campaign in the campaign that I'm running. Right. So like, I occasionally just like delete one of my backup characters and just like mess around on there. I'm like the PDF and just oh that's oh oh so you're not oh you're not uh -uh. paying for the, nope. the monthly subscription nope. so you don't have unlimited characters. Yep. yep. Oh yeah yeah yeah. No, I paid for that. I and don't. <laughs> I have like 20 characters on D and D Beyond and. I'm Every... playing two of them. <laughs> I have six. I always have six. I play two of them. Um, so that this this brings me to the question, Devin. Um, so uh, you and Joe, you start the podcast, and obviously the the title, the name of the podcast is Nerds from Nowhere. Obviously, you guys are giant nerds. So, what is you know, what is your, I mean, your areas of nerddom, you know, the, like your specialties. What of are your fandoms? And, are, yeah. and then like, and then on top of that, you know, because we are talking about D and D games and D and D campaigns and all this other stuff. Um, I'd like to, I'd like to hear some of your, um, your D and D tabletop RPG background. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, you're not going to be impressed with that. So, no, um, well, for me personally, I know Joe's a little different than, than I am. I've always been like a, a superhero nerd, okay. yeah. personally, a uh, sci-fi nerd. So I, I always loved, um, oddly enough, I never had comics. My parents wouldn't buy me comics because I sold my money. brother's. I huh? worked in a comic store and took my pay in comics. Oh, okay. See, I would have loved that. I, I've actually, it was great. In the last like few years, I've started getting into them because uh, I went a long time like being intimidated by the idea of buying them. Well, yeah, I get, I get that. Yeah, but um, but I never did as a kid. My parents wouldn't buy them for me. But I, I loved superheroes. I always watched like any of the cartoons that I could get my hands on. Spider-Man. Justice League, Spider-Man, X-Men. Spider-Man was the best. Yeah, I loved Spider-Man. Oh. Like, he was a nerd. Right. Yeah. How like, could you not love Spider-Man? And that show was excellent. It was so good. The like, 90s animated series. I used to I used to have um some of them on VHS. So we'd like <laughs> so like on Saturday mornings if like the cartoons I wanted to watch weren't on, we just like put in Spider-Man. It's like, yeah. I, w I watched it like a few years ago. That one and uh, the X Men one, and nice. like, those stories are still awesome. Like I didn't even realize what was going on when I was a kid. But X Men it's like, was really good. Yeah, it was an excellent story. It was a but... really good cartoon. Yeah, yeah. I, I was a big fan mm. of uh, Gambit. Yeah, Gambit's he was, awesome. He was he was mine growing up. Uh, yeah, like yeah. I've actually got my giant book of box of com comic books right next to me uh, which says mike's comics and mike's is crossed out and it says adams <laughs> <laughs> they're my brothers that hey. are now mine hey nothing wrong with that yep. steal them all mm -hmm. there you go. but like so. he, he he doesn't have room for him because his library is uh mainly D, &D books hey um so you know <clears throat> i got these and i'm not complaining about it that that's that's the way to do it so... by the way um Nice uh, cardboard cutout. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but I have to ask, since we're on the uh, topic of nerds and fandoms, uh, what's around his neck? <laughs> um, I'm curious as well. Yeah, like, I, ever since you, I'm like, uh, I, I, I forgot that was there. Uh, it's, 
I know I got it from college. I don't think it's even anything. I think when I graduated, they just gave a little everyone little in my program things. like a little. It's your graduation <laughs> MacGuffin. Yeah, something. I, I think I just said it Talk. there because I didn't know where to put it, nice. <laughs> and I forgot it was there. That's so. That's awesome. Uh, the, the doctor's wearing my graduation <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um. <clears throat> so comic books. That's you know that's a very yeah. um you know definitely a uh, a common uh, n- nerdum yeah. um but uh, what about uh, what 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 is your experience with t- uh, like D and D and tabletop RPGs? So that was one of those things that I never got into as a kid. Okay. Like um, I grew up my my parents. Um, they fell into that whole thing that happened in like the nineties where they thought it was ah, evil. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's the satanic same, panic. Same with my parents. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they were convinced of that. My dad, even recently, I was talking about it and he was like, You know, that's evil. I, I knew a kid that went insane from playing it. I'm like, No, you didn't. You, you just didn't. Like that's you might have known a kid that played D and went insane but, but the two were not correlated yeah it's so not... yeah he, he probably was mentally disturbed and happened to play D. it's just stop but um but i, I believed that as a child sure. and i i avoided it um i think my first time i ever attempted to play was in college and i went over to a friend's house but i didn't even know what it was i just had heard of it Okay. Uh, in you the tricked context me into of, this devil worship. Yeah, and you know, my parents were like, "This is evil. Don't play it." And my friend was like, "Hey, come over. We're gonna play D and D." And so I go over there, and, all and he was folks. he was a little bit weird, and his friends were very weird. <laughs> and this is the mentality I already had. Yeah, <laughs> that's glorious. And um, so we sit down, but nobody even explains what's going on. So yeah, I'm kind of like picturing like Monopoly but weirder sure. and um <laughs> and so we sit down and there everybody's just like sitting around with books like writing stuff down and i'm just like so what's happening and nobody ever explains it and then like four hours later everyone's still just like passing around paper and talking about crap and i still have no <laughs> of what's going oh, on wow that's a so i finally just game. left and and there was one weird kid who kept talking to me, and he wasn't even playing. He was, <laughs> he was my friend's roommate, and he kept telling me stories about how he was a werewolf. Not in D and D, he was a werewolf. Yeah, because he woke up one night not knowing where he'd been, and his clothes were missing, and he there was blood. So of course, obviously, obviously he's a you werewolf. Know. Yeah, I mean that's my first go-to as well. That's yeah. the that's the obvious so, the obvious answer yeah. there. so i i left and decided that i was probably right this is not a good game <laughs> <laughs> just because your your friends that invited you don't know how to explain anything yeah exactly <laughs> but I, plus I, there I, was a werewolf there. I, I, plus there was a werewolf there i totally get that though <laughs> oh, yeah. you know i i remember when i was in high school and i had you know, we had our, our, our big group of friends and we all role played different games. But like there would always be these folks on the just on the outside of the group, you know, that like were kind of there, like on the peripheral, and they were bonkers, bizarre ass mother fudgers, you know, like <laughs> and you're like, Why are you hanging out with this person? He he literally believes he's a vampire. Literally. <laughs> the sun is out. <laughs> you know, like, like I, there's... I was lucky enough where like my introduction to D&D was like reading, stealing the books and reading them. Like I, my brother played and I was like, whenever I would, I would go visit him when he was in college and I'd like, these books would just be out and about. And I was like, oh, cool, what's this? So I'd like look at him and be like, this is awesome. This is so cool. Um, and so like I would like, like that's what I did when I visited him because I just read D&D books. We didn't really, like we hung out, but I was just like, cool, I'm going to more read more D&D books. Um, 
Yeah. So like I had like chewed through a ton of like literature before I hit like my first game. My like, headset's dying. I'll be right back. Oh no. <laughs> like my first game, I was like just about to start college, I think. And like my brother, I was visiting my brother, and he's like, "You want to pl actually play these books?" <laughs> and I'm like, "That'd be cool." Um, Cause like I didn't want to be like, "Hey, can we play this?" Cause like that's not the person I was at that point in my life. Like right. asking to be part of something was not me at all. Yeah, um, like right. it was like, "Oh, somebody's inviting me to something. Awesome!" But like <clears throat> I wouldn't be like, "Oh, I want to do this." Get that. Um, so like we played and we did a combat round against uh, Storm Giants, which is funny now that what we're doing, but um, like that was I did a con like we did one combat encounter, and that was my first experience with D and D, a single encounter of combat, no role playing at all, no <laughs> like just like and I'm like oh because okay, it was like they were teaching me the mechanics. Um, which like I didn't really process at the time. But, like they're teaching me like, oh, this is how you roll. This is what you do. It's like. I'm like, okay. Um, but like, and then it was like two, three years before I played my first like actual session of D and D. But like, it's not, not. I I can't imagine going into like because I was, I was introduced on three point five. I can't imagine going into that with like no knowledge of anything, like. Yeah. Well, yeah. the, the way I got into it was um, really kind of by accident. I I saw an ad for a um, Harmon Quest. I don't know if you guys. Okay, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Uh, I was like, "Ooh, I love Dan Harmon." Because how yeah. can you not? Community so I watched that, awesome, yeah. and I was talking about it at work, and somebody was like, "Oh, if you like, um, if you liked that, you should watch Critical Role, and you should watch uh, Titan's Grave." Okay. And so I started watching Titan's Grave because yeah. that's on my to-do list. Titan's Grave, yeah. Yeah. And so I, I watched all of that really quickly. And then I was like, well, I love this. I'm going to watch Critical Role. And then, like, it didn't take very long before I I went back to that guy. And I was like, I want to play this. <laughs> like, there you go. <laughs> we, so, we need okay. to Please don't invite your werewolves or vampires. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any friends that think they're a werewolf or vampire or <laughs> any kind of mythical beast? <laughs> That don't, that is something that is something that is very common these days. I, I you know when we were I was doing the first pilot for this, uh, and chatting with uh, Dana and Riley, th that was basically Dana's introduction to D D and D was finding Critical Role and starting to watch that and just going, oh my god, I want to play this game, um, yeah. and. I think that it's is brought so many people in. It's it, great. It really yeah. has, and it's it's really helped normalize the the game and make it like just feel yeah, like a lot of people anybody didn't will understand play it now. what it actually was mm -hmm. before that time. Because yeah. I actually have a story about D and D, being a D and D player in the nineties. Um. Our parents were very religious, so yeah. Yeah, you know, we... One of the kids in my group wasn't allowed to play with us because his parents were religious, so he had to sneak in. Uh, we all went over that to... That would have been me if I... <laughs> yeah, we all went over to our friend, our friend Trey's house, and there was like there was like 13 of us or something like that. It was like the whole group. And we're at Trey's. Trey lives like in the next city over. He's not close. Um, and we were all still, I would say, you know, this was definitely before any of us had a car. And we all go over to Trey's. We're all hanging out. We're all playing this big D and D game in his in his room and stuff. And his mom walks in, and his mom's like super super religious and stuff. And this was like 1990. I want to say 93 maybe that's about when i started yeah you know so um yeah she found out we were playing dungeons and dragons and it was it was like 11 p.m almost midnight i think um I've been past my curfew she kicked us all out of the house we all had to walk back to um the city that we lived in 
Um, oh, no. Now, this Thanks. is like in Orange County, California, so all the cities are connected, like, yeah. you know, but but still, it's far. Um, and so we're like, we're basically, we spent like two and a half hours, you know, in the middle of the night, like walking home uh, because a very religious uh, woman decided that she was going to kick us out. Let's for endanger D&D. all these children yeah. instead of letting them call their parents. Yeah. Out. Yeah. So, That's and up. I, you know, like I, I had my cousin, you know, I, I met all of his friends through him when I moved down there and they had a game of Dungeons and Dragons going on for, it was uh, president's day, the Monday from school off from school uh, in 1992, yeah, uh, we can calculate that date. And <laughs> yeah, it was literally uh, they, their whole group was there. They're playing D and D. I was just hanging out, just like watching. And I ended up making a character. I made a fighter. I made him neutral evil for some reason. <laughs> and then this douchey guy that was a friend of the groups. Um, was playing like a monk or something. And this was a D and D first edition. So Ooh, like, I played AD and D second edition. It's I didn't really. Um, yeah. So I basically like a mage or a monk at first level, they have one D four hit points. They're dead. They don't start with four hit points. They start with one D four. So sometimes they have one hit point. Um, and that's how the game works. But anyway, so he was, I don't know, he didn't do something or he did something and kind of annoyed me, so I killed his character. Um, and that was my first four-way into D&D. And, uh, and that guy, John, uh, we never talked. We were never cool, ever, ever, ever. <laughs> like, we would be at the same fr- like group gatherings and... He would never talk to me. Um, I really didn't care because he was kind of a douche. So whatever. Um, I uh, that's fine. You know, I'm sure he's a an upstanding human being now, and because uh, that was a very long time ago. But you know, whatever. We were kids. So, <clears throat> uh, are you in, any, in Are you in any games now, though? Um, so yes, I say that that way. That was a lot so, of question marks. <laughs> yeah, it was. there was like I, ellipses and everything. I get that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the group that I'm, I set up here in, in this booming metropolis, that, <laughs> uh, it consists of a bunch of people that work at the same hospital that okay. I work at. We play occasionally <laughs> but it, okay, it never seems really. to work out very well Scheduling the but adulting way. adulting adulting yeah i yeah. have not played with my irl group in over oh, wow um the last time was probably january um oh. well, I feel, I feel that bad. was that was two sessions in january and then the last time we played before that was uh last august Oh, wow. uh, yeah. because uh, like three out of the uh, like seven people are in the Renaissance Festival, which just started up oh, uh, yeah. so on and on top of working like normal jobs from Monday to Friday. So they literally have no days off during, so during season. Fe- that's what yeah, you do. We yeah, just are like, we're not do. playing yeah. because we would like to go home and kiss our wives. Um, like we have a wife, not multiple wives. <laughs> um, <laughs> Oh, okay. So they're not from Utah. I was. I didn't <laughs> want to make a joke, but thank you for going there. Uh, but, uh, uh, I love it. So uh, yeah, like so we take these huge breaks, um, and we're trying to get like I. I really want one of our. So the guy who like is like when I think of like my IRL DM, because um, we all switch off uh, for the most part. Um, I think there's like two people in our group who have not DM'd games. Um, but like he uh, was the person who did the big like year and a half campaign of Pathfinder P6, which is a great system. If anybody ever is looking for something new to try, uh, you stop leveling up after level six, uh, but everything else around you doesn't. Um, it's really cool. You just keep getting feats. 
like every time you level up you get feats but you don't get health or anything so it's a lot of it's like very much uh more it encourages strategic um gameplay you know you have to think and work together uh it's really fun uh but like after he was um, talking about like doing a new campaign uh like set x years after that um and like him and i were talking and he's like the way we're gonna i've even figured out how it's gonna start uh, they'll wake up in a cavern and it'll be your old character's dead body and nothing will be explained. Uh, my character who was the fool and he's just gonna be like die- have died in some like horrifically like unimaginable like he's gonna have like part of a tower stuck through him or something like in the middle of a game like some inexplicable way that he died and it's like it'll never get explained but I feel it'd be fitting a fitting way for him to go and I'm like yeah not, you're not far off. <laughs> But I really want him to start running that again because, like, it was really fun. Like, I love Pathfinder, um, and like, I want to play an occultist again because they're too good. <sighs> so, uh, one thing I, I we do have a few people in chat. Um, so, anybody in chat, uh, if you have any questions for our guests this evening, uh, please. <laughs> throw it out there in chat um and while we're waiting for that um so okay yeah you've got the in real life group that doesn't play we all get that for sure um well except for joy joy just plays joy, who all the games all the like time play. you know like, <laughs> right behind me yeah it's like they they all live in the same house it's like hey what you know that's... We have we have a game that hasn't started yet that we're calling the couch game and it's just gonna be one that we play when we're bored at home. I like don't the sound watch of Netflix. This. I, I love the sound. I of love it. your life. I love it. <laughs> like... I swear to goodness. Um, but I honestly I I, I joke um, because you know like I I I'm married to a man who doesn't doesn't play you know the games that I like to play, and that's okay. It's totally fine. Um, we have a lot of other great things in common and we share those. Um, and you know, that's why I don't play on the weekends because you know, it's the only time he has off work. So it's like, come on, you know, that's Mark's time. So, but I I specifically don't schedule things on Saturdays, but I'm totally, you know, like I, but occasionally, yeah, sometimes I'm like, I would like to be able to play like more often and and stuff like that. So I, I get that. And the whole, my whole jumping in with the group um, for Threads of Fate was literally I had a game that I was playing with my cousin and or my, not my cousins uh, my I'm gonna say my nephew and my niece but they are uh, in their early 30s okay so they are not children when I say my niece and nephew uh, <laughs> They are they're older than I am. Yeah. So, um, but they're, it's my, like my husband's nephew um, and his wife. And we would play over Skype and he would take, we would take turns. He would run a game. I'd run a game. And uh, whenever we played, each player would play like two characters. So we'd have a balanced party because there's only two players. Well, that was, that went, great for a while and then um all of a sudden around christmas time it just kind of stopped and so i was just sitting there like in chat going gosh i don't really have my my game anymore and yeah i could join a game why not (laughs) (laughs) uh so thankfully that happened because i i have to say I, you know, like I went to high school with um, some amazing people and throughout all those years and then even a couple years after high school, uh, we just were a close group. We played a lot of different games, a lot of different systems and stuff like that. Um, and this was back in the 90s. There weren't as many systems as there are today, right. but you yeah. know, so many. there were... There were some really interesting systems back then. We played a lot of cool stuff, but I have never felt this close of a 
bond with the group that I'm gaming with than this group here. Um, and I don't know what that is and why that is, but, you know, it's just like, it feels like, you know, like, feels like we've been through... Barovia? <laughs> yeah, it feels like we've been through war together, <laughs> which, aka Barovia, yeah, I mean, that shit bonds you, man. You know, like... <laughs> Um, <clears throat> and I think, you know, I think it's funny cause, um, you know, uh, cause even like right at the very beginning of our character creation, you know, when I was making my character and how kobolds, they, they're really tribal and everything like that. And, you know, being abandoned and forming this new tribe, um, it, I don't know, for some reason, like that instilled something or started something in the back of my brain where it was like, like these, these people are my tribe and, and it uh, just went, it went right to heart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I love these people so much. I, it's a pretty fantastic group. Can't right? imagine my life without them. And I can, it would be a lot more boring and a lot less fun. Yeah. I I just I just can't I just can't imagine it you know so like, it's 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 one of the few like there are um like and there are only really two like groups that where I'm like even if I'm like that I would rather play like it's like it's like when you're feeling like absolute shit I would still like rather play yeah, uh, yeah. and it's threads of fate and my irl group because even if like especially like the irl group where like we meet in person and like we are our irl group and i highly encourage this for anybody who plays in person uh we make dinner like mm. everybody brings something and we all make dinner mm. um and it helps because like we're gonna get fed anyways um and so it helps cut down costs for the person who's hosting um it gives we have like an hour we get like together at like five that's when people start like trickling together uh trickling in and like we for the first hour hour and a half we make dinner and we eat dinner and then we game for like three hours afterwards and so it's just like it's it's this it's just as much like community um and like that's that is like legit the thing i miss most about like irl gaming is like actually getting to go and like <laughs> be there with people yeah i do like group yeah. uber yeah. orders because the dm uh doesn't have time to he gets out of work he'll usually get mm. home at like 9 30 or 10 and we'll yeah. play for an hour hour and a half tops yeah like but we, even even if we're not gaming sometimes we'll just go over there anyway yeah. and hang. it's 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 we've and we've done that where it's like um like if we have so many people out mm. um like you know if we have x amount of people it's like let's let's just get together and dick around. Let's uh, watch my, Parks and Rec. That was my <laughs> second <laughs> session as DM um, ever was instead we're playing Cards Against Humanity because half of our players are gone and I felt like shit. Um, so they're like, you, let's just play Cards Against Humanity. And I'm like, that sounds awesome. And I just kind of like face planted on the giant <laughs> table. I'm just like, I'm going to stay here. You guys can make food tonight. Well, at least you were you were playing Cards Against Humanity and not that evil Dungeons and Dragons. Game. I know, right? <laughs> um, I am wearing pants. <clears throat> I'm wearing shorts. I am uh, wearing I am wearing what I wear all summer long, and that's messenger shorts. I I wear pants year round, uh, despite the fact that it gets over a hundred, uh, because I work in a cooler. I'm wearing nothing from the waist down. Awesome. <laughs> no, I'm. Wearing I mean, awesome. like, if if on normal stream nights, I'm usually wearing like, uh, b basketball soccer shorts. Yeah, that's what I wear. Yeah. Basically, I'm wearing basketball shorts. I wore sweatpants to work because I can't do jeans yet. Yeah. yeah. I I if I if I didn't have you know like, uh, plans for later in the night, I would wear. Maybe shorts, but you know. I you got you gotta you know not let yourself get too comfortable because once you take off the pants, putting them back on is just yeah, it's, it's awful. It's it, it should be illegal. It it does it does feel pretty bad. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, we we have a general 
a general rule it's like for me it's okay once the um you know once the mail is gotten from the from the street it as long as there's no trash at the you know on the street you know the trash cans once a week on the street as long as i don't have to like go into the front yard basically <laughs> is is like okay it's time to put on pajamas whichever so summertime that's basketball shorts and wintertime that is usually like long pajamas i like the ones from uh life is good uh they're they're really lightweight and they're a little pricey but i'm worth it you know and, and <laughs> I'm, I'm, a furnace. I'm a and, furnace so like my pajamas are like underwear so I, like I, if i need to do something i I'm can't old. wear them okay you know like i'm old you know like uh, but but i am also a furnace and that's why they're lightweight pajamas like, i can't i i, yeah. I can't do yeah but that's just to walk around the house we have you know we have another adult living in our home so it's I not don't. like it's not like we could just walk around in our underwear and stuff like that. I was just I having can. this conversation with somebody yesterday, um, but <laughs> I can't do that. So it's um, pretty great. Uh, it's so pretty we, fantastic. it's like we walk around in shorts or pants, and then and it's like when you go to bed, yeah, you sleep in whatever. You know, that's 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 your that's your personal area. You know, it yeah. is. <laughs> it is. Um. So with that, uh, we are. We are hitting the hour and 20 minute mark. So I think we'll start to wrap things up. Um, I, uh, I definitely want to thank you guys for doing this with me today. I really appreciate you guys being here and participating and um, having a fun chat. Yeah, it's fun. Fun. Thanks for having us. Yeah. You better be grateful. <laughs> Except for that one guy. Uh yeah, you know. Thank you. It was fun. No, yeah, and hey, this is great. And I uh so it looks like I am gonna do this officially for the first time. Uh it's gonna be September eighth, Saturday, September eighth. It's okay. gonna be at six PM Eastern, three PM Pacific. And it is, and I have lined up my first panel, and uh, I got my dream team. Nice. I have, I will have, um, the, the, uh, sorry, uh, the three co-hosts of the Nerdy POV podcast. So nice. that's awesome. Uh, Carrie, Brian, and Martin, uh, will be here. Uh. Saturday, September 8th, and we will have a nice chat and essentially return the favor for them inviting me on their show twice. And I, anything I've done online, um, anything, uh, especially Brian and Carrie have been insanely supportive of everything, uh, whether it's, it's up front or behind the scenes uh you know like so you know i definitely and yeah so that was my dream team i wanted to get them together because they've been on hiatus for a long time and uh just get that that magic back together you know because they the three of them together are amazing and i miss their podcast yeah and it will return soon i know um better than ever but uh, yeah, so the only thing I need now is a name for the show. Uh, <laughs> Twitter and, poll. Twitter, Twitter poll. poll. Uh, yeah, <laughs> no, I know. It's it's a matter of like options. having like at least four options least, that yeah, I yeah, like, three. you know. So if you have three, it's not a real poll. You need that fourth option. Oh no, that's you how need... that's how Kayan got created. He was need... the the he was option. the fourth option. I, yeah. Like I have like I still have some grumpiness about that, but you know <laughs> I, I like him, so I, he gets to stay. It's okay. I mean, the Twitter poll that I ran chose Cobalt. Like that's the part that I kept. Yeah, swashbuckler. It, it said swashbuckler, and I decided cleric. 
Um, but I mean, that, I'm glad you did. That works yeah. really well for him. Part of that was also because Carrie already chose Assassin Rogue, and we were going to Barovia without a cleric. Which is stupid. So I was like, nope, I'm going to do it. I'm gonna oh my god, it. imagine me being the only healer. Well, I mean, we, we had so we had a paladin, but yeah, he it was, wasn't a healing paladin. It, it was a paladin that like had a. Um, it was a, a paladin who a brought cons- down a house a consistent on death wish. You know, like he was. Constantly... It wasn't a death wish. It was a death. It was his. It was his background story. <laughs> Even after that, he kept his dying. background story wanted to kill him. <laughs> I I love you, Mike. I miss you. <laughs> I wish you were still playing with us. Um, but you died a lot. You died so much, and it was all your fault. <laughs> every, time, every time. Every time. That was the thing. Like it was. We it was love so you weird. no less. We don't. But, we don't. It was almost yeah. my fault. Like yeah. it was just. It was. Yeah, he died. Well, in the, the first time house. was almost kind of Joy's fault, but like I mean, <laughs> but then like the then he just that... like owned it. Then he just he like had no the oh. option to run out of yeah. the. You can't house. kill me. I'm killing me. <laughs> yeah, it really was. Yeah. Uh, the second time was the dragon, uh, which he he pissed off the dragon ahead of time. Right, 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 right. And yeah. then the dragon and was then... no longer a dragon, and it threw him off of a cliff. Um. Uh, and My last he... words to him in that session were, Vathras, O'Brien, you never listen. Yep. Um, and then uh, there was the uh, time that he died. Uh, was there the was there a third, fourth one? Yeah, it was. Because I remember inside I accidentally of, killed him, sort of. Inside kinda. of the uh, the vampire's castle. Yeah. Well, yeah, he died. It, he died like near. He the died end off there, screen like, that time. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, or, yeah, because up in the yeah, by the witches was, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, he was unconscious, and the witches killed him. Yeah, yeah. But that yep. was like the end of like the end of the campaign or the end yeah. of that that thing. So. Um... Oh God, I cried so much at the end of that campaign. <laughs> I'm glad I wasn't on screen for that last episode. I just freaking bawled my ass off the whole time. <laughs> it was it was rough. I but cried a good. lot, bro. I'm, I'm looking yeah. for like this whole like with the new session, new uh, campaign we're doing for it. Like I'm just I'm uh, like I I cannot wait for those moments. Like we've had a few moments that have just been like woofy, um, but like it's great. I would rec- like I'm I'm not gonna pimp out my like stuff entirely, but like our Thursday night game, especially last time. Oh, it was good. <laughs> It was I, good. I make stupid decisions and I never get punished. <laughs> <clears throat> and I have to say, like, I, I, every time I'm actually able to be in there and like watch or, or sometimes I'm listening while I'm working and I am listening to Paul, the DM. And sometimes I'm like, what the f- you know, like yeah, oh yeah, no, it's great, it's great. He it's, has the it's perfect, the creepiest shit happening all the time, and it's, it's like Barovia, man. I love Barovia so much, but it's like a totally different. You know, it's like that shit's not in the books. You know, like there's some crazy ass stuff that comes out of his mind, and it's it's a beautiful thing it's a beautiful mm-hmm. thing there's yeah. some we've uh we uh just actually got into the uh curse of Strahd proper um we were our introduction to it was through an adventure league um supplement uh, that takes place in barovia um and it's uh even some of that was homebrewed um for a bit to make things a little bit more interesting but like it's fantastic like it's I, one of the things that I really love about uh, Curse of Strahd is that it gives so much opportunity to the DM to make things different. Um, and I am really excited to see how he does Strahd because um, I get a, I, I, I don't know how he's going to approach him. Because um, like there's a, like he hasn't really given us like a he's given us a little we've 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 officially met Strahd um, as a giant wolf. We didn't know we. We don't know that it was Strahd, but like the players know, um, and uh, it's just it's gonna be. I I had this conversation with Carrie um, while all you guys were off, 
uh, during break one session. I think it was like the it was the last session after we had um, taken care of Strahd. Um, and I had I explained to her that I don't play Kayan characters often. Kayan is not my type of character. Um, if you've watched Threads of Fate, Flynn is my type of character. Um, I don't play responsible characters because that's no fun when you're in a fantasy world. To uh, but it's, it is fun. But like I'm very much more of a like I'm gonna jump off of this cliff because it might be cool and I might do something awesome or like. Flynn would probably try bringing a house down on top of him if he thought it would get accomplished what he was trying to do. But like, those are the type of characters I play. And so now I'm in Barovia, which has lots of things you're not supposed to touch as a character who like, creepy, like totally suspicious people come up to him and are like, hey, you need to trust me. And I'm like, totally, let's do this. And it's not going to come up and bite him in the ass at all. Uh, Sure. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Barovia is just a happy fun place. That's the that's our that's our group. Our group chat <laughs> name is Barovia Happy Fun Times. So let's. Uh, um, what am I gonna say? Okay. Uh, so, uh, to to wrap things up here, um, we we'll be back next Friday on Soul Bear RPG um start at the normal time um uh, that's <clears throat> 7 p.m eastern 4 p.m pacific and uh thank you guys for joining us thank you uh to those of you who catch this on the vod or on youtube uh definitely appreciate your support and hopefully this is uh something that you know i can do on a regular basis and maybe people enjoy it i don't know uh if most of the things i do online tend to be to uh generally help other people in some way shape or form so if you know with doing this or the the podcast idea that i was thinking about doing earlier um was really just give me a chance to like put something out there that I can bring all the cool people I know or people I've met or um, interesting folks and give them a, an, an opportunity to uh, get themselves maybe in front of somebody who's never seen them before or something like that. That would be awesome. You know, um, the whole reason, one of the, the main reason why I set up the t-shirt shop was basically so I'd have more money to uh, donate to Patreons and uh, Twitch subscriptions and things like that. You know, I just, I do my best to support the people that need it. And um, so uh, I appreciate y'all coming out to watch and, and stuff like that for following and all that great stuff. And, uh, you know, please, uh, ch check out, you know, check out the nerds from nowhere podcast. It is available on all your normal, uh, podcast listening devices or apparatus. Um, whether you use iTunes, I don't, uh, I have a Samsung phone and I have a Windows computer that I have, get it. I, I have resisted, computer. I've resisted that damn iTunes program because <laughs> it is the devil. It's it not is, bad. It, it, it's, it puts it's stuff. It's not d d it's Apple. <laughs> it put, it's Apple. I hate it. Oh. I, 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 I wish that I could, thing. I could, I wish I could restore it to like, how it was in like when I was in high school and then I'd be okay with it. But yeah. like now it's just like, I want to update everything exactly. every day all and the time. So you can't use this in, if you're making nuclear weapons and I'm like, but guys it's, 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 <laughs> it's in their terms of agreement and of service and agreement. Yeah. You know, so there's just the that. Um, but I, you know, like on my, you know, on my computer, I think I use something called gopher or is that it? <laughs> Uh, I have Podcast Addict on. I used Podbean and. Podbean's uh, good too. Grover, uh, that's Google what I have on my, me. on my laptop. I have Grover on my on my. Uh, I have Podcast Addict on my phone, 
And I have Podcast Attic for um, Glass Cannon, Almost Heroic, and uh, my dad wrote a porno, uh, which I highly recommend to everyone because it is legitimately the most hilarious thing I've ever listened to. Okay. That sounds funny. It's it's a funny. British dude and his two friends reading through the porn that his father wrote, the erotic novel that his father wrote. My and God. it's terrible. It is like horrifically <laughs> written. Um and like they do an episode where they take a drink whenever like a certain word has said it. and it's not even a dirty word it's just like this really awkward word that his father thinks is dirty but oh, isn't okay and so okay. like it becomes a right where like every time the word comes up in a chapter they take a drink and they get very drunk by some episodes um but it is starting it's um they every season is one book longer long because his father has written multiple erotic novels oh my uh, goodness. and they're all following belinda who is the uh, a representative for a pots and pans company? It's bizarre and it's wonderful, but they're starting up on Monday for, with like season four or something. Um, so I've just been like waiting for that to come back so I can listen to my crappy yep. British horn. Um, but I, I definitely like to say that uh, Devin and Joe, they are two amazing guys. I. I mean, I've only <laughs> met this guy like just what a couple months ago, and yeah. <laughs> like we were fast friends. And That's this true. guy, this guy is is one of the most genuine people you ever meet. And their podcast is interesting. It's funny, and they have had some awesome guests. And so please check them out if you haven't. That is uh, the Nerds from Nowhere podcast. Yeah. And, uh, of course, you can follow um, all of our guests. All their Twitter handles are above their names. Uh, make that real easy. And mm -hmm. um, so uh, with everyone looking at the, you know, the screen and stuff like that, did I over rainbow the thing? Did no. I overdo the rainbow? I, I There's like some it. gray in it, and I think it could be something a little bit brighter than gray, but I think that's just the uh, opacities overlapping. I love well, it. I, I actually, uh, I did like the the actual <laughs> frame itself. I did gray that out because I didn't want it to be over saturated. Should have gone a hundred. Yeah, I yeah, guess so. you can never have too many rainbows. You can't. Okay. You can't. Okay. Like, <laughs> I, I just want to make I sure. Be the voice of opposition, but, but I, you changed I, your tune. I, I told you. you can't. It, it's. I mean, it's, like rainbows are great. They're, they're they. They, they really. They really <laughs> are nice. Um, and it's then, like the uh, time in my podcast that I argued against um, the charity for kids because I said I hated kids. Oh. I was joking, but you know, still, you I've, just I've, you end up feeling bad. I've, yeah, <laughs> I've done I mean, devil's advocate a few times. I mean, sometimes yeah. you have to be, and and sometimes it just comes out like you mean it. But um, I was raised by two very sarcastic parents, so sometimes words come out of my mouth that sound sarcastic, and it's not. It's not sarcasm. It's oh, funny. I love you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so, I meant it. I meant it. I really do. Yeah. <laughs> So this has been fun, but <laughs> get out of my room. Um, no, but uh, and then of course uh, catch catch Adam on the Thread Raiders Twitch channel, Sober RPG, his Twitch channel, and soon to be somebody else's. I'm sure. Yep. Yep. Potentially two other people because I am awful. Um, uh, it all depends on how people feel about things being streamed also Devin, which what is the uh twitch address f or the twitch name for the the channel you guys are streaming your uh when you guys do your recordings yeah that thing is um, that nowhere nerds or is that nerds i'm pretty sure it's um nerds from nowhere um underscore between each of the words okay okay so uh yeah so you guys have started uh streaming your recording yeah. sessions yeah and um, yeah i was i was watching the one you guys had with maxine that was oh, okay. fun that was hilarious that was fun. That's maxine. Gotta be fun. yeah so yeah. those I'm are planning to upload that um for like vod here in the next maybe tonight awesome or tomorrow we'll see when i get around to it yeah Joe actually has the, the recording of that, so it depends on when he. Oh, okay, it. okay, yeah, <laughs> I get that. Um, 
and then uh yeah so we will um uh i'll be returning here at least uh we know september 8th uh yeah. saturday for the official start of whatever name comes up uh on Bending. some twitter poll to be had in the next day <laughs> or two um <clears throat> there have been some things thrown out online that i do like um i personally was thinking uh something like you know uh, so Maddie talks. S- yeah so maddie I, I, I like to throw the so into things that I name, you know, like my store is so nerdware. And please go to so nerdware.threadless.com uh, and pick up your Uncanny Dodge shirt or even your Noakes Dragonborn shirt. Um, it, it showed up. And yeah, so it is here. It is Noakes. He is gorgeous. And. Uh, uh, you can buy him. Um, I'm also setting up some other stores uh, just because there are some places that offer things that Threadless doesn't. And uh, need travel mugs. Well, I need stickers. Okay. Stickers so are very important. I I'm I am looking at that. I I'm I signed up with another company. Yes. Ooh. Yes. So love it. And oh. Yeah. Um, nice. And if you are watching, if you are, uh, go ahead and if you if we are mutuals on Twitter, uh, go ahead and DM me and I will send you one of these. Woo! Mine's Ooh. over there. So this is a <laughs> my stack is over there. Two and a half by five threads of fate. Art by at the Bat Clam. Please go follow her. She's amazing. And today, uh, she finished. Um, I commissioned uh, Martin's uh, Professor oh, Whom. Whom? Professor Whom. Uh, <gasps> Professor Whom. Whom. And it is amazing. I, I, that, I'm so that excited man. to see it. Oh, that man. So I. I messaged Martin. It's like his birthday. And I'm like, oh, I, I want to get him something. And I just like, all of a sudden I was like, okay, I'm going to commission art as a belated birthday present. So I ask him to send me a description. He sends me a picture of an owl. He sends me a picture of, um, of Dr. Who. And I'm, I'm forgetting Tom Baker. Tom right. Baker as Dr. Who. It's very important <clears throat> to say which, which uh, doctor oh, it is. Yeah, no, I know. Um, like I we're talking like seventies, mm-hmm. you know, with the, the whole like multicolored scarf and everything yep. like that. Like that Doctor Who and like a book. <laughs> and so I send this to Jen and go, <laughs> Jen, this is what he sent me. <laughs> he is he's an Aarakocra, like an owl Aarakocra, like necromancy wizard and occasionally has like this like greenish tinged magic that you know necromancy magic that comes from his his hands i picture and, like shadow with green like like stuff around the edges and i am telling you she sends me this thing this morning and i i mean sh- every effing time she blows my mind yeah. I, i'm like um the day that she sent me the Maganhild final, I was having a really bad day, and I got it right in the middle of my terrible day, and it made my entire day. Like the nice. the the work on the tattoos is like it's beyond anything glorious. that I expected. It's exquisite. It's she she is a genius. She is She's great. fantastic. Unfortunately, they have uh, they're setting up uh, their the t-shirt creating thing. They. They've been working with the webtoons and all this other stuff. So, like, she's super backlogged right now. But I'm pretty sure she's still taking commissions. It is worth the wait. It is worth the price. She is, like, she's the best. So, um, yeah. So, you can DM me and I will send you one of these uh, because I love you. And uh, so thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining us. And uh, I'll be back. Uh, definitely back on the 8th. Um, I may 
probably try another pilot if I can get a group together just for shits and giggles because this is fun. It's fun. And uh, yeah. Uh, oh, okay. And there's another person in the chat. Many chats. I like that. I like that. Um, what was the, gosh, uh, uh, Chase, Chase put something on, uh, Twitter so earlier today. No, <laughs> it was, oh golly, what was it? I gotta find it. Now it's going to drive me crazy. Um, uh, Gormorf mm-hmm. had the Maddie presents. I, I kind of liked that one too. And then, um, I, oh, the thing was. I thought it was interesting that a lot of people were saying like chatty Maddie or something like that. Cause when I thought so chatty with Maddie was a great thing, but I was afraid that putting chatty with Maddie would annoy people. No, apparently people it's want, cute. people want chatty with it's Maddie. Catchy. So I like that. Um, I think you should go with, so what comes out of Maddie's mouth? That's mm-hmm. that'll be the wrap up. That'll be the wrap up yeah. bit. Yeah. Okay, that that that's not a good name. I I I still I'll you never tried. You name. tried, and we that's appreciate fine. it. <laughs> I still like it. I still like it. And I oh oh that's right. So Maddie made a talk show. Dot dot dot. I, I like, like that. I thought that was cute too. I like that. Um. So at first I thought you were gonna say so Maddie made a taco, which I also like. I I also approve of this. If you had a taco stand, that would be awesome. Oh, yeah. I would love... Um, I love making tacos. Yeah, we'll have yeah. to check. So, uh, yeah. And then, of course, uh, please, if you're not following these beautiful people, please follow them on Twitter, on Twitch, on Instagram, on everything. Don't and... follow me on Instagram. I don't post anything. I just use it to creep on people. Okay. I'm not um, even sure if I have an Instagram. I have one. I get notifications that people follow me every once in a while. I have literally never posted anything on it. I now I turned mine into a business account. So I use mine to like uh, look at funny pictures of like famous people. That's it. Yeah, uh, me too. Because yep. it's like tied in with Facebook, and I, you know, yep. like that's I'm how like, people uh, find it. You know, stuff. it's kind of like uh, my mom's oh, yeah. on Facebook, and that's not. Great, I might you know, be but, mage. Yeah. I might be. I am. What? I don't follow many people. Uh, oh, I, I'm following Jackie apparently on everything now because I kept like getting these things going. Uh, would you like to follow Jackie Luang? I'm like, we noticed you're I, friends with this guy. Do I thought I did, you know, like, but no, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Um. So. <sighs> so chatty gamers. Ooh, I like that too. Um. Okay. Awesome. Uh. Thank you guys for joining us and. Uh, have a good night. Bye. Heart hands. And let's transition out and mute you and mute.